to Life of the Party. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I'd like to introduce you to my band tonight, Clint and Holden, playing some tunes for you. I'm Amy Chamberlain. I'm the chef and owner of the Perfect Wife Restaurant in Manchester. And on my show, we do lots of things around parties. And tonight, we're going to learn some really cool stuff. One, I'm going to show you a couple hors d'oeuvres. Two, we're going to make a fun cocktail. And three, Tara Palio is going to show us how to make beautiful arrangements with grocery store bouquets and stuff around the house, from house plants to pine cones and moss. So let's give it up for Tara Palio. So Tara and I have had the pleasure of working together on a few events here in town. She's, she owns um, Tara Polio Floral Event Design. Mm -hmm. It's a mouthful, but yes. uh, she does beautiful work, gorgeous flowers, and designs entire events with linen and also anything the bride wants or the client wants, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, so when we talked about doing the show, I said, let's do something where we could just, you know, get the audience's attention, something they can relate to. And she came up with this great idea. So I'm very excited that we're going to learn some really neat stuff that you'll take home with you and actually use. It's going to be fun. Yeah. So you haven't always been in floral event design business. No. Um, so tell me a little bit how you got into it. Well, <clears throat> I moved here about, oh, now I've got a frog in my throat. Um, about, the water. <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> About uh, 23 years ago, and I was uh, fr from Connecticut, and my husband and I decided to move up here and start a family and just gotten married, and um, I was a paralegal. So that was my training, and there really wasn't much of a demand for them up here. <laughs> Everybody so, already had theirs, yes. right? <laughs> so I ended up uh, working in Stratton um, in their Human Resources Department for about four years, and uh, during that, I recruited about 1,100 seasonal employees, and we all know how much fun that is in Vermont <laughs> <laughs> to try to find a new half staff. Half of them every last year. a month, yes. and the other half last two months, and right. then you got to re rehire. So, um, and then I also handled the uh, employee parties and all sorts of fun things. So, um, I was pregnant with my second son and decided that maybe it was time not to work in a corporate situation. And um, as I was leaving, the um, head of Stratton at the time had asked me to coordinate a party for the InterWest bigwigs at the time. Um, and I I did that, and I just he said, "Oh, you know, call a florist. You're going to need to get some flowers." So um, I was an avid florist, or uh, gardener, I should say. I was not a florist. I'm not a trained florist, actually. Um, I and I said, uh, "Can I? Can I do it?" I kind of a lot of things growing in my yard, and I've always kind of wanted to do it. So I did it and uh, delivered them to Stratton, and they said, oh, "Who did these?" And, da, da, da. and I was like, "Oh no, no, I'm not a professional. It's not, you know." It's not what I do, and so someone said to me, you're a professional when someone pays you. Did you get paid to do these? And I said, yes. So yeah. it was uh, that night I went home, and it was my husband and I's uh, fifth anniversary, actually. And, um, and I decided that that's it, I'm gonna do it. So I was made up, you know, I came up with the name Tara Palio Floral Design at the time, added events later, because I started doing more yeah. with linens and lighting and all those things. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, it was a little nerve wracking, because again, I'm not trained, but come from a long line of artists in my family. And um, I was actually, my high school guidance counselor really wanted to push me to go to art school, but I wanted to be a lawyer. You that never find happened. your way. To yeah, the arts, yeah. I guess, right? And uh, so um, mm -hmm. I think the thing that um, really got me to do this was that I, I would get arrangements sent to me, you know, after I had a child or my birthday, and I never really liked them, you know, it's, times have changed a lot, thank yeah. goodness, but <laughs> um, I would end up pulling it apart and rearranging it and going into my yard and grabbing some things mm -hmm. to kind of give it a little more excitement, um, and so that's kind of just, Amazing. here I am, 17 yeah. years later, yeah. And you realize probably throughout the years that when someone hires you to do flowers, they actually mean can you make everything beautiful, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's where the events came in? Yeah, 
And uh, there was a need for it. There wasn't a lot of people in this area, actually in Vermont, um, that were handling any full event design. And I just really loved, I find that, you know, starting with a really great container for your flowers or a really great tablecloth on your table is really your canvas. So you mm -hmm. build from that. And I think, you know, you start with a great fun container of glass, a really beautiful piece of glass, or a, your favorite pottery. You can put anything in that and really make it beautiful. Nice. Well, I can't wait to learn how to do that. All right. Well. Um, so tell me a little bit about the seasonality of, of floral design. Is, that, is there, like there is with food, is there definite, you use calla lilies in the spring or I don't even know what. Yeah, no, <laughs> there definitely is. Um, it's amazing um, with the, you know, with the internet now. Um, I mean, just, <clears throat> excuse me, just in the past three years, how I can get my hands on peonies almost any time of year now. Really? You're going to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and you know, places like Alaska are growing um, longer seasons, and um, they're just coming. Everything is pretty much coming from around the world, and a lot of things that were just seasonal are grown in greenhouses. Um, you know, yeah. so you can pretty much get your hands on things. I always say. Stick with what's seasonal. Stick with what's local. Um, Vermont's got the best peonies. Um, yeah. You know, once you yeah. have those, you can't really yeah, get them anywhere I know. else. Oh my gosh. So um, yeah, I, I definitely think you know sticking with what's seasonal in the spring. I mean, it's my favorite time because yeah. you're you know even we're a little delayed this year. I know. Well, all my daffodils went. <laughs> yeah, mine too. <laughs> Every one of them. Just the, I think so. the day before they were supposed to open. Then we got the snow, yeah. and I went and looked, and they're all rotted. And, yeah. yeah. So um, when well, I signed we still up, still got the tulips. Yeah. When I signed up to do this with you, yeah. and I said, "Oh, let's use stuff from the air." So it was a little bit of a challenge, to yeah. say, to <laughs> say the least, today. <laughs> but we're gonna do it. So. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. So we made this up while we were prepping here today, and Tara's husband Michael said, "What are you gonna call it?" And I said, "I don't know." So we're gonna have to come up with something while we're okay. doing this. What we're gonna call it? Um, but when we were talking about making a cocktail, we were talking about bitters. How bitters are really cool these days, and everyone's using bitters. So. I ordered this little four pack of flavored bitters, which have in it grapefruit, lavender, cardamom, chocolate. Lavender, cardamom, chocolate. That's four. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we're going to use the grapefruit one, and I'm going to make tar Tara this um, awesome cocktail with some Green Mountain Gin, which is made in. Warren, Waitsfield, Stowe, somewhere around there. I can't remember. On the way home from Jeffersonville. How's that? <laughs> we stopped there. Oh, I was going to measure that, but that was way better. It's going to be a good one. A little vermouth. Be a capful. Because it's not a martini. Right. I'm going to dilute it with some other things. This is the grapefruit bitters. I'm going to put a little, boom, a couple shots. I'm going to put a little more than what I did in the first one because it's... So what really bitters actually do to a drink? Well, they're, they are generally very high alcohol, alcohol like green alcohol, okay. that is infused with herbs. And um, that, or the, you know, the, the alcohol takes the oils out of the herbs and, or whatever right. it is you're using, and it makes like a tincture that you yep. put in there and it will um, give it some flavor and it, it really is bitter and I don't really understand why it's, I mean grapefruit zest obviously is bitter but right. chocolate or right. you know. So I'm going to put this in here and you can make your own bitters too which is really exciting um, with all different stuff. And a little more ice and then I did some grapefruit soda. A squeeze of lime, and then I, I had a cocktail in um, Las Vegas where they did this. They put this, the grapefruit in there like that, and it is so beautiful. Is so beautiful. And the next thing I'm going to do is the Tuscan Noisemaker, which I make very often for summer parties. and. Today I'm using some Hildine Farm um, microgreens that were just harvested a couple of days ago. They're, they're growing them and there's baby kale and 
um, mizuna and baby oak leaf and it's really really great stuff a lot of times I use um, arugula in the summertime because it has mm -hmm. a nice peppery goes really well with the prosciutto I have prosciutto and I have some um, keeping with the theme Hildeen farm um, cow's milk Cavardi. let's put that there and we just um, oh I forgot to show you I just thinly sliced a little bit of the Havarti, like that, okay? And you can use like a grater if you want, um, but I had a little um, cheese there. And the prosciutto is so, I use pre-sliced prosciutto. You don't want to buy a chunk and try to slice it yourself. It's never going to be thin enough. So you can have them slice it at the grocery store. And just roll it up, and the fat just holds it together, just like that. What I'd like to, do, what I'm going to teach you about is basically we're going to start out with first how to make the grocery store arrangement look beautiful. Um, and again, they've come a long way. So I got these at the local grocery. I left the bag on so you knew I wasn't cheating. <laughs> and um, first what we have to do is just quickly clean up our stems. So we have quite a bit of an arrangement. Um, the color actually combination I thought was pretty nice. But you've got the things that most people don't really, it's like the uh, taboo word, like carnation, okay. um, ostromeria. But these are, these are flowers that last a long time. So they're, they're very cost effective. Um, you can use them over and over. You can constantly rearrange them. All right, so here I've taken and I've made a little bunch here. I'm gonna clip them. Well, someone and told me once to clip them under running water. You, the reason you clip the flowers under running water is because what they're doing is they're taking a gasp of air okay. once you clip them. And when you do that under water, they're sucking the water. I, do I do it? It depends on the flower. Mm -hmm. um, when it's in my own home, no. Um, certain flowers like hydrangea, it's a good idea. Although hydrangeas mainly soak their water through their um, heads, through their flower. Oh. The flower head. So if you ever have one that's wilted, um, just it. put soak it in a, um, warm water in a sink. Oh, Fill okay. it with sink at the sink, and you'd be that's surprised. Cool. So there we have one, and then I'm going to take and put all my green flowers together, except for the sad hydrangea. But I'll I'll give it a chance. We'll see if it comes back. <laughs> don't wanna don't wanna exclude anybody here. So these are basically what I'm putting them in. Our drinking glasses out of my kitchen cabinet. I keep with my kitchen, I have very basic white, very basic clean, and I use these real, really every day. I ask my family because they're like, where are all the drinking glasses? <laughs> I don't know. So by doing this, it's easy. Um, and you don't have to fuss to find something. They're clear, they're basic, they go anywhere. So I'm going to cut these fairly short, and I'm going to stick this in another one. And you're going to have to, you're going to, probably cut them a <coughs> few times before they fit properly. Um, okay, and then we're going to take our brighter pinks. And again, I'm just going to take them down a little more. You can, you can leave them longer if you want them a little more wild, but I'm going to have these neat for my table. So this is basically an $8.99 grocery store arrangement. And I'm going to take these down just a tiny bit more. And those are pruning shears, right? Pruning you know, shears, yes. Indoor yeah. pruning shears and outdoor pruning shears? I'm supposed to. Um, <laughs> half the time I have scissors that are labeled ribbon scissors, ha ha. Um, <laughs> I try. Um, but it is good to keep them and clean them and I don't usually do that either. So. We're going to turn the little sad guy to the side. We've got a couple more, but your favorite here. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to use like something like this is a totally different, you know, it's more of an upright flower. Don't be afraid if you want it to be a little cleaner to prune the tops right off. Oh. And you can make it a little more compact like the others. So here we have basic drinking glasses. I'm going to give these one more haircut that have now become a full centerpiece for your table. And the nice thing about having smaller um, 
things down your table, is you, you're going to have a big arrangement. You're going to stick it there. Then your guests come. You want to put a platter down or candles. You end up taking it off. With something like this, they slide, they move. You can fit your wine glass as a small dish of food or something. So it really is practical. Um, as thing, you know, you can use them all in groupings by themselves, um, which is really nice. Another thing I did with the arrangement, same idea. I just took the flowers and I put a little elastics around there so that I can pull them in and out if I want to trim them, change the water out. Changing your water out is key. If you change it out, you don't even really need to trim them all that often because I don't and they still last. Um, but they say to, and it's probably good practice. So I shouldn't probably say that on television. But um, so here we have the same exact idea in one dish. So maybe you had it this way for your dinner party and now you don't really need all that down your table. You want to put whatever you normally have sitting there. How cute is that for a bedroom or a kitchen by your sink? And instead of just taking the arrangement you know, that you get, your husband brings you home flowers, you snip the bottoms, you don't even fluff them out or pull them and you stick them in a vase and blah. It's not, this definitely shows a little more style. So that's, um, awesome. that's what you have for that. And again, just a bowl out of my cabinet. So my next thing, which is my absolute favorite thing, because it involves gardens and walking through the woods and having fun. Can um, I move this here? You can, and I'm gonna get rid of my garbage here. So. Just that put is this on the back it. counter here. <clears throat> so what we have, now that we're going to do here, I'm going to get rid of that. So it was a bit of a challenge um, when I said to Amy that I was going to go and forage in my yard um, for something to do for tonight. So um, clearly I think you all see what it's like outside. But I really ended up getting a lot of great things. Um, I was walking by one of my gardens and these little grass tufts were there. They were individual, I don't know. They were probably part of the bird seed mix or something that happens to be near that garden. So I pulled them up, I rinsed them off. I found some succulents in my garden, hens and chicks. All you have to do is break them off, these things will not die. So um, a little bit of a root, you, if you don't have a root on it, it's still fine. So those are some things I found. I had some rocks that I've gathered from Cape Cod. I bring them back every year. These are always on my coffee table. You know that you're not allowed to bring rocks yes. from Hawaii? Oh, I don't think you're don't supposed know. to bring them from anywhere. Oh. So, sure. so I actually got these at the dollar store. In Hawaii, they um. say that there's, <laughs> there's, um, things will get you if you if you take rocks oh, from yes, the beach in Hawaii. Oh, yes, I have heard that, yeah. Oh. It's like the Brady Bunch kind oh, of. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. And then you're just your tree um, mushrooms uh, that are actually very hard. You need a pretty good sharp knife to get these off the tree. And then the... I used to lean on them. And yeah, yeah, they're hard. Yeah. And then the, these were just branches that fell down. I had my husband trim off the ends. He loves to do this for me all the time. And her yeah. husband just redid my whole bathroom, which is gorgeous. <laughs> Michael Polio. <laughs> Clean slate tile. I got to give him a plug. It's gorgeous. <laughs> I wish I had a picture. We'd show it right there. So, um, so what I'm going to do here, and I'm going to move mm. these out of the way so you can see. All right. Here, we'll put them. We don't want to block your beautiful food, though. Oh. Okay. So now what we're going to do is do this is with our woodland. Now I went to a local nursery and I got some plants today. I don't have a green thumb in the house for some reason. I don't know why, but um, I probably neglect. Um, but I went to a seminar this um, this last actually this time last year with this wonderful woman, Francois Weeks, who's a Belgian floral designer. And she uses houseplants galore. And I always felt like I was cheating if I was doing that for some reason. Like, oh, I can't use, you know, something outside in my yard or whatever. Um, but then I realized that's kind of why I started this. So um, basically what she did is um, using houseplants and nature, um, which really reminds me of that's kind of what I started with. I loved greens. I loved texture. I love contrast. And it, we all have it in our yard, whether you have gardens or not. So here I took a very simple bread plate. I took a candle. I clipped a piece of this fern and a piece of this fern, the Boston fern. And this one is, I always forget the name of this one, button fern. And I just simply wrapped it with a piece of twine. I left the stems a tiny bit longer. I stuck it on the plate with a little bit of water, which is great because if this drips, the water is just going to pop right off. So, um, and your ferns may, you know, these are kind of tender and young, so this one's kind of wilting, so this one's a little better. So here we have that, taking my little grass clump here and a little succulent, throwing a rock, and 
there you have it. You do. You, you always let, they always say to work in odd numbers. We'll put it here. Three. Um, you know, put three of these down your table, no matter what you use, and it's it's adorable and it's cute. And honestly, I would want this on my coffee table after my guests left because it's not just a stiff arrangement. So really, don't be afraid to have fun and try different things. And that's really it's all about trial and error. So that's one idea. And then I found these cute little sushi boat dishes under the counter here. We used to have these, but my husband can say we moved and had to downsize the kitchen a little. Not his favorite thing there. Um, so what I'm going to do, uh, basic floral oasis. Let me grab this here, which you can get at any craft store. Um, great to keep in your house, a couple of bricks of it, because around the holidays, I mean, it's, it's so easy to just whip something up. <coughs> so th what this is is floral foam, and you need to soak it in water. Um, you don't ever want to push it in. You want it to drink it, or else you'll get air pockets. How long, you think? Um, it doesn't take more than like a minute. Oh, OK. So what I'm going to do is just cut these in these cute little sushi, sushi dishes. Yeah, it's like a giant brick of wasabi. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> don't eat it. Um, and then here's another candle I had done earlier with just some moss. Normally, I actually, for my house, I do go and grab sheet moss. I started to do it yesterday, and my hands got really cold. So I said, oh, I'll go back out, and I forgot, and now it's pouring. So I did get use dried sheet moss that I have on hand, which, again, is to dry your own sheet moss, just peel it off a rock. And you, if you have bugs or things you're kind of worried about, you don't want those crawling on your table, stick it in the oven on a sheet pan at a very low temperature, and it will kill anything in it. And then shake it outside, and you're good to go. So save yourself some money. We have plenty of moss around us. Are you going to work with that right now? I think I might. And okay. then I'm going to take some of these. Um, so I'm going to use that last. So what I'm going to start with, here we have a cyclamen. And we've got this beautiful begonia, which are my absolute favorite foliage to work with. And another one. And again, here we have texture and variegation. And if you have house plants, these are great ones to have because they're pretty easy and they don't like a lot of light. I picked this up at the local Shaw's um, just so we'd have some flowers to play with for little pops. So what we're going to do here, let's get, see. yeah, I'm going to move this over here and this over here. So when you, you're not going to kill these plants. So we're going to be able to use them over and over again. Let me get my little snips here. And you're just going to cut, or you can even pinch with your fingers, just a little short piece. And you're going to stick them in. Can you reuse this stuff? No. OK. No. Once it um, sucks up the water and dries, it's no longer porous, so it won't. OK. Because you know you get plants with that stuff in it oh, a lot, yeah. and so I always wonder, yeah. oh, should I save this? And it kind of stinks, because sometimes I'll overhydrate too many. and. So here we're using, I'm going to use this. Oh, you know, this is a cute little moss fern. That's pretty. Which I love. Cut them. And, and some uh, plants may be a little more finicky than others for sitting in oasis. So if you know you want to use something that's a little more delicate, cut it a few hours earlier, hydrate it, stick it in some water so it could really suck up the moisture, and then, um, and then it'll be just fine in the oasis. So this one doesn't even seem to want to stick in. So I'm going to play that way. That's cool. All right. So we're going to take another button fern. And you just keep doing this. Um, here I have some more little succulents that I got out of the yard. So basically consider the fact that I went to my kitchen and I got a little any little tray. You could use the plates, whatever you want, whatever size you want. The little um, oasis, so I'm going to keep filling it up with anything at all. Um, let's see, what else so do we neat. have here? I have a silver one. Let's do a silver one. Okay. And it's really fun. And so you, are you going to put th three of those down here, or was this going to be this something This is, different? I'm just using this here. So okay. moss is a fantastic Oh, so you don't even cheat. see this stuff. Do it last, and it fills okay. in all those holes. Because you don't want to keep stuffing the, the piece over and over, because then you lose sight of what you actually even put in there, because yeah. it's on top of each other. That's really cute. So, just that would be a cute thing to put like in the powder room when you yeah. have guests coming. And so here we are going to do that. And then if you want to just pop one of these guys off, these again, oh. you don't even need to put the, if it's just for the evening, they don't even need to go in water. But you can just stick it straight in. And that looks like a little woodland garden. It's a little woodland garden. garden. So to take and do three of those. Can you see that, Kath? 
You need me to move it around? Let's move some of this stuff out of here. So what I'm going to do, we're going to keep playing. One more quick thing. The broken, broken branches here, they're from the yard. Okay, kind of crisscross them down the table, lengthen it depending on how long your table is. I'm going to have that back. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Oh, because you're doing something so cool. So you can just stick those between these branches, and you've got this beautiful topiary, uh, not topiary, I'm sorry, uh, tablescape going down, however long your table is, whether it's round, crisscross them in a cross, um, and just keep filling these up. I could just even take and throw that in here. Ah. Um, and a little, because these will be totally fine without any water. Cyclamen flowers are fantastic um, in arrangements. So if you wanted to add a little more height, maybe. And they're nice and stiff, so they get to they stick They are. They can right find a spot where I didn't. There we go. So that. Um, and you can also take things like um, if you had some floral wire. That's a little next step. Not everyone <laughs> has floral wire. But if you did, it's very easily okay, time for better clippers. Um, and your tape, floral tape. And you could just simply wire these two to stick up a little higher if you wanted to do that. Or you could cut the whole stem. I mean, it's up to you, but you, maybe you don't want to take all the flowers off your house plant, you know, and you, this way, I mean, all of these are still looking great. Yeah. You know, you've barely touched them. So that here we have. That is really amazing, Tara. Actually, we'll stick that right in the ground. Uh, I'm going to put it in this one because... So what you do is the idea is to continue down with as many pieces as you want. And quite frankly, I even think that's beautiful. It take, is. Take a pillar candle, plop oh. it in your arrangement, and keep yeah. doing that. Or and you could take... You could put your cocktail there. <laughs> or you can use a, gla a juice glass and throw in just a simple floating candle. Oh, so very pretty. You've got... All from your own yard and your house plants. Your own. I mean, not, none of this was really purchased except for the oasis or the house plants that you have to buy the first time. Yeah. So, so if you have a green thumb, you're good to go. Yeah. And wow. you know, pachysandra is a great thing for your from your yard. That's well, always we all green have on. plenty of that. Myrtle, all those great yeah. things. Yeah. Ajuga. Ajuga. Yeah. Right, mom. Got a lot of ajuga. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I wonder if you could use like. Things from your vegetable garden. Have Absolutely. Done, like, pea tendrils. Oh, right? I love them. They're gorgeous. Yeah. They're gor and honestly, you know, um, when it is the height of the um, harvest season, or the, you know, the flowers, the spring flowers are really big in the spring, up until about end of June. Then you're kind of petering out. You have your annuals. You can cut annual flowers. Begonia flowers are gorgeous. Stick it in a glass. I mean, it's it's. Yeah. Beautiful. You, yeah. People don't think to cut their annuals and use them in their house. Um, and they'll keep blooming. Um, but using things like from your vegetable garden, your peas, um, just a simple glass like that filled with those crazy, wild, interesting textures of, of pea shoots. Um, mint. Just cut some mint and stick it next to your sink. It smells great. You'll tend to use it. Yeah. Make a beautiful oil with it, as a matter yeah. of fact. So well, We've uh, come full circle. Hey, hey. How about Thank that? you so You're much, very Tara. Welcome. So thanks, Tara. That was really so much fun. It was a lot of fun. Thank I, you for asking me. Oh, yeah. I learned a lot. I learned okay. a lot. Um, but while you were doing that, something came up. You know, you get the little packets from the store, but if you're doing an arrangement at home and you don't have the packet from the store, is there anything that you might want to add to the water to keep your arrangements from dying as quickly? Um, well, I personally don't. Again, number one, always change the water out. I mean, if you can remember to do it daily and recut your stems because they dry out, that's the best thing. But if you want to play around, you know, they say to add a little sugar. Um, but definitely a little bit, uh, just a splash of bleach in the water will help keep any bacteria from growing so your stems won't rot. Well, that's a good tip. Yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, so that was so much fun. And I, I think that um, everyone here is ready to eat. And um, we've had our fun. Yeah. And we have cocktails here we want to drink. So, thank you so much. Thank you, Amy. Oh, it was so much fun. Thank you, Clinton Holden. That was so great. Thank you, studio audience. Thank you, Dr. Aaron T.